Okay, I want to share a few tips with you that have served me well done through the years. Um, it's allowed me to have one of the windiest builds, if not the windiest build for two dual 12s um, out there. Um, it really works well. It's a concept that has just been around forever. Just a three inch slot port. Um, I'll get into a little bit later the configuration of it and how you kind of want to fit that into an, an airspace. But um, speaking of space, there's going to be five elements, one, two, three, four, five, that we're going to look at. The available space, you know, what size you can fit a box into, uh, the equipment and the to fit the needs that you're going to to meet the goals that you're trying to achieve, the airspace that that equipment needs to operate in, the port that needs to operate that airspace uh, to get that into the cabin of the vehicle, and then the final dimensions or the wrapping that airspace in the actual plywood itself. Um, there's a whole lot to it, so it's, this is definitely just going to kind of be an overview. But um, generally, the when you look at the back of a vehicle, whether it's an SUV or a hatch or whatever typically you've got around 32 36 inches to play with so you're going to want to look at the parameters of that and i never really drew it here which i do so let me draw it here real quick just the airspace that you think is in the trunk itself you know because that's kind of what you're that's kind of what you're starting with there so let's say that that's 36 inches wide let's say it's 30 inches deep and most vehicles you can get at least 20 inches height on it um so you would look at it like that and say, hey, this is the airspace that I have. Now, what size do we need for a cushion for that? And it turns out we don't need near that big. It needs to be 25 wide by 12 inches tall um, by 23 inches deep. So we're not even utilizing all of that space. Um, but it's there, you know what I mean, um, if we want to do something greater. So look at the space, what will fit in there. What equipment is used? We're not going to talk about pairing up equipment here. <clears throat> Most of us know the on loads and all that. Um, as far as specs go, I don't really go by specs. I see specs as like a speed limit. My motor will carry my vehicle a lot faster. It can be reckless, so you don't want to go too fast, um, but you can exceed definitely what the manufacturer says it'll do because your manufacturer's recommendations, that's what they are. They're what the manufacturer recommends that equipment to be run in uh, to safeguard their equipment. A CYE type thing. So I recommend, and this is just me, this is how I build and design um, an eight inch subwoofer, anywhere between one to three cubes, a 10, anywhere between two, uh, two to three and a half, um, a 12, two to four cubes, uh, mine is and 3.7 each, absolutely killing it, almost doing a 52 on two 12s and 3.7 each, two to 28. Um, a 15, somewhere between four and a half to six cubes, maybe a little larger, depending on the sub. An 18, somewhere between six and eight, again, maybe a little larger, depending on the sub. Uh, so just generally, that's what you're trying to look at, those cubes that'll fit in here, what you can utilize. And then you got to look at the airspace. That's what we were talking about here, uh, required that cushion that's going to all sit inside of. And then how you can integrate a port into that. Um, and then once you get all that done, wrap all of it with plywood. So that's what we're going to look at, the available space, the equipment, the needs, the goals, uh, the airspace, the port, and then wrapping it all up with plywood and making it all go boom in the back of something. Or the front, you might have a bug. Yeah. Uh, so we've already established that we don't need all the available space that we've got. We only need 25 wide um, by 23 deep. And it's going to be a little greater than that. But that's the airspace that we're dealing with here. And I want to show you real quick how to come up with the uh, square, the cubes for that. So 1728, if you do 12 times 12 times 12, you get 1728. So that's where it comes from, 12, 12, 12. Uh, just to give you that reference frame of mind. So it's a three-dimensional type of a deal. So looking at it that way, what we finally come up with is 12 times 23 times 25. You don't have to hit equals. You can just hit divided by, but I like equals just so I see it. Then divided by that 1728, the magic little number. If we were doing, uh, trying to get the the uh, resonance and the speed of sound, we'd do 1125. But um, So that comes up to 399, which is right at four cubes. So this box is going to be four cubes, <clears throat> excuse me, to fit into that space. It's going to be four cubes tuned to 28. So we know that we're going to have to integrate a port into this. So by doing so, 
we are going to look at obviously making this wider to accommodate for the three inches this way, but we've also got to go this way with it to make it three inches wider. So it's going to end up being 26, right, by 28. And then by the time you add the three quarter, three quarter, inch and a half, it's 29 and a half. Uh, so it ends up being 29 and a half. Um, that's what we've got here, 29 and a half. So we, this is the little three inches that we just added for the port. This, this is where the port ends, right here. So this actually becomes usable chamber. And I've done the math on it. Um, three and three quarters, because it's not just three, it's the plywood two, by 12, which is how deep it is, uh, by 21 and a quarter, which is the, the remaining box. Uh, that gives us that 0.5, which is a half cube. So this is an entire half cube of space that we're going to integrate into everything else. Uh, what's remaining here, I think it's like 21 and a quarter by the, whatever it ended up being, the 25 by 12 is the 3.8. So we got the 0.5 and 3.8. So that ends up giving us the 4.3. So at 4.3, we're in fantastic shape there. We only wanted four. So by the time we put some bracing in and a sub, we're gonna be right around that four mark. So we know that in the port calculator, and I can, I'd can, i like to do a tutorial sometime on the port calculator itself, because it's a really cool, that's all I ever use to design anything. And it's all you need and it really works fantastically. Um, but you go into the port calculator and you take that down to four cubes, because you know you're gonna have some displacement. Um, so you put in the width, which is three inches, the height, which is 12 inches, the tuning, or the volume, which is four, cubes and then the tuning that you desire which is 28 and it gives you 26 inches so it's a three inch by 12 by 26 that's the key to it guys um these people are doing like big wide ports and things and each to their own whatever uh but this right if you think of this like in think of it like a balloon if you poke a hole in it and squeeze that balloon you're gonna have more pressure like that than if you take a big old knife and job of you know what I'm saying if you do it with a needle it's gonna have a lot more pressure than with a with a, a knife this is going to explode and blow and just let it all out uh so if you do that real big wide port it that's you know you can get that frequency you can get that note uh, but typically people want to do that with the higher end spl builds trying to do 45 hertz plus you know to peak out um i'm not trying to do that i'm trying to get windy and and low and loud and that's what this does so we've integrated a 3 by 12 by 26 inch port here we know that we're left with 21 and a quarter inside of the box if you will from you know this little area so we've established all that we know that we're good on the parameters of everything um as long as we maintain three inches of port here and you got to be real careful with the wall placement this one right here for instance um you're going to want it to go to be 21 and a quarter and be short three and three quarters off of this so that this one can come over and cap it here. You want it to go in behind the wood so you only see one exposed edge. So you gotta ma maintain three inches, three inches, three inches, three inches. Make sure you maintain that is essential to the tuning and the port and the performance, um, which is gonna perform, I promise you. This box right here, if you build this box with a 12 inch port like that, this thing would float cloth in the window. I mean, it's it would really be something. So we've established all that though looking back on it we know that we've got the airspace we've got a port integrated into that we've figured out that hey once we encapsulate that to it we've got to add two here we've got to add two here so we know the final dimensions of the box is going to be 14 and a quarter by 27 and a half by 29 and a half that's double baffle on top the time you add the double baffle on the bottom three quarter that's uh two and a quarter and you add that to your <clears throat> excuse me already 12 and that gives you the 14 and a quarter this we've already added up calculated for the port um same thing here we've added up figured in for the baffle and then on the width of it we've already added the sides of it up on the the top after you get done with the chamber you gotta think of this chamber as not being touched you can't encroach on that even with your three-quarter boards i mean it makes i did a um a post one time one piece of three-quarter plywood is two cubes so if you're not going to have that much, obviously, but that shows the displacement of a three-quarter piece of plywood. So if you go filling this up full of plywood now, you're just taken away from your airspace. So you got to think of wrapping that with plywood and then adding a port to it.
to be wrapped as well. And then you end up with a, a box, a full box. And this box would do absolutely um, what it is intended to do. So we figured in the airspace, we figured out the equipment that we need. In this case, we could you could give out the 12. You could put a 12 in that, a little bit of blocking. If it's too big, that's what I like about these big boxes. If it's a little too big, you could put some, I did a post on that on blocking of how much two by four takes up for a half cube. I mean, you can shrink them down and, and bring more sound. It's, I mean, I've done it. It's, it's possible to do. So you figure out the sub of 15 would work in this too. It'd be a little small, but it would work. Um, either one of them would blow, would stand hair up on its end and front cloth in the, in the window. So anything that you went with it. So the equipment, the airspace, how to integrate a, a port into that airspace and then how to wrap that up and make it a box. Something that's gonna go boom in the back of a vehicle. Um, so anybody that's ever got a design for me, you know that this is kind of what it looks like. So we're gonna end up with a final box of 27 and a quarter, 14 and a quarter, 29 and a half, um, that's with a three inch port that's going to be end up 26 inches long. That's coming in 21 and a quarter over three and a quarter. That gives us a 26 inches for a 28, uh, eight tuning. Um, range on this is going to be somewhere between 20 and 45 ish, 45 plus. And it's going to play those with your filter set, right? And you want to set your subsonic filters, right? And all that. I mean, we could talk about all that another time, but, um, this is a box right here that would go boom for sure. And it's, Thinking about the placement, let me talk about that real quick before we get off here. Thinking about the placement of this, and, and you can go, actually go into the port calculator, and you can change the height of the port. And as you change that the port height, it changes the length. Keep your chamber the same, because that's not going to be different ever. We're going to keep four cubes. But as you change the height of that port, which is changing the height of the box, um, it increases or decreases the, the port. So... The key to it and the secret in my view is this. You want to make that to where that, that port goes in and turns one time. You don't want to, and, and you know, I've had to do it and, and it'll still work, but I like this chambered feel. If you like here, and I've kind of redrew that differently, but like that, where it doesn't turn, you still got a chamber there, but if you can work it out and even bring the height down if you have to, where that, that will go in and turn like I did here. I worked this one out to where it only turns like four inches, you know, but it still turns is the, the main thing. That gives you more of a chamber. Doesn't that makes sense inside of there uh, than just that board. I mean, it's, to me, that makes more sense to do it. And it works very well um, every time. I've done it like this with the straight shot too, and it still works, but this way seems to be windier. So you, you want to work it out to where that you're going to make that port turn one time. And, um, I've had them to turn twice. And, and I see people kind of doing this with ports. Um, like that, you know, type of a thing. I don't, you know, each to their own, I guess. But I just, I find that smooth transition. I see base as a wave. So if, it, if I can get it to kind of wave down that port and, and come out and break into the wind in the right spot. And let me talk about that too for a second. A lot of people don't understand the frequency that your car peaks at is for the, that the length of the wave that's going to break in your window. Um, I'm going to do a video on floating one of these times, and those are really essential for floating and knowing the peaks and the frequencies of your car, all those types of things, but we won't get into that today. Um, just realize that if you can make a port go in and do a 90 and, and turn um, three inches, at least 12 inches tall. Mine and my truck's 29, so my box is 29 tall. Uh, well, actually, I did mine across the bottom, but it's 29 deep, so that acts as the height of the port. Um, so you can go, you know, up with it. It's still going to base. It's still going to make wind, but if you can keep it down to those lower, like a 12 inch by three, I mean, it really makes a bigger difference on on the amount of, especially in a smaller setup. So there it is. If you've got any questions, I mean, feel free to to message or, or whatever. Um, if you disagree with the theory here, then don't use it. I mean, just don't trash up the comments with, you know, blah, blah, blah about it. It's If you don't like it, don't use it. It's, it's really that simple. If you do use it though, get ready for some results because most of you have seen my videos and they, uh, they're they windy. And it's not like this little narrow sign tune box either. I mean, some people are making boxes out there floating stuff in windows and it's really just a peaky, 
SPL box, you know what I'm saying, in reverse, if you will, if you would tune low, if you will, um, with music overlaid with that frequency to, to kind of do that. That's not what this is. This is a box tuned to 28 um, that will play up into the mid 40s and down into the high teens. And it plays, I mean, I listen to all kinds of different songs on it. So, I mean, it's like, it plays pretty well. It's not just a peaky sign box um, to where it's going to be like a one note wonder. So, good luck with it. I mean, build one and see what you can do. Screenshot it, the measurements, and uh, that's what it's going to end up being, the final results of it. So, there it is. Good luck with it. So, minor correction real quick to the box. After looking at it, there is something that is not exactly right. Um, this port wall will actually be 23 because you added 3 inches to the back side of the box. So, this would be 23 and then turn three inches to get your 26. So just wanna make sure that's correct if someone wants to order or to actually build this box, um, that you're exactly right on the dimensions of it. Just, as long as you maintain three inches off the back, three inches here, three inches, I mean, you'll get it right. The tape measure will show you. But just wanna point that out real quick. And that's why it's so important to go back and double check and look at your stuff.